Let's talk about four practical ways to improve blood sugar control, type 1 diabetes edition. Number one, pre-bolus whenever you safely can. Fast-acting insulin is just not fast-acting enough. It typically will take about 20 to 30 minutes to start working for most people. Therefore, taking insulin about 15 to 30 minutes before your first bite gives the insulin more time to work and better match the timing of the rise in blood sugar after a meal. This should help reduce the height of the post-meal spike, which will in turn reduce that temptation to do the infamous rage bolus. This also comes with the important caveat that I fully understand this is so much easier said than done. Number two, resist the urge to overtreat low blood sugars. I know it's incredibly tempting to eat a ton of carbohydrates when your glucose starts to drop low, but overtreating often leads to a huge spike in your blood sugar, which just continues that roller coaster pattern of ups and downs. So, if it's a scenario where the overall glucose trend is just slowly drifting downwards, try to be very measured in your response by just nibbling on a few grams of carbs, just enough to nudge it back up by about 25 or 40 points. Now, of course, if your blood sugar is double arrows down and crashing and 40, then that's obviously a situation where you want to be as generous with carbs as possible. Number three, this is kind of similar to number two, but optimize your comfort zone of blood sugars. Picture in your mind the perfect blood glucose read. Is it 90? Is it 120? Is it 150? Now, there's not a single right answer for everybody, but I've had many patients who intentionally keep their sugars running on the high end of normal because they're scared of low blood sugar. And I totally get it. It's true that severe low blood sugar can be very dangerous. But thankfully, modern tools like continuous glucose monitors and insulin pumps give us more visibility and control of our glucose levels, which reduces the likelihood of an unexpected extreme drop in glucose. So with the right tools and in the right context, having a flat glucose value of 85 or 90 might not require immediate carbs. Number four, have a system. Much like learning a sport or musical instrument, it's important to have a foundation built on fundamentals. This doesn't mean you have to do a formal calculation every time you eat a meal, but it's important to have a system that you can turn to when your sugars seem more unpredictable or when you're tackling a new scenario or type of food. You should have a big picture understanding of how different types of insulin work, what your true basal insulin needs are, how to calculate insulin boluses, and how different foods might impact your glucose levels. Now, I'm a huge fan of learning through social media, obviously, but for something like this, I'd recommend a more systematic approach and reading one of the books pictured here. But yeah, hope that helps. Let me know if you have any follow-up questions or if you have any other questions entirely.